हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हार्टी वेलकम टू ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन यूजीसी नेट एंड सेट एग्जाम प्रेपरेशन चैनल स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज लेट मी नो इफ माय वॉइस इज ऑडिबल एंड आल्सो लेट मी नो इफ यू कैन स्टार्ट विद द सेशन ओके सो वी विल वेट फॉर सम टाइम फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स टू जॉइन एंड देन वी विल स्टार्ट right so as i already i have told you that we are starting a new new batch for ugc net 2022 from tomorrow that is 24th of april where we will be providing you daily live lectures from monday to saturday and uh, every day at 9 pm uh, 9 pm to 10 pm and along with that we will be providing you complete study material as well from notes quite last 10 years question papers test series question bank and everything if you want to join you can download global online app or you can whatsapp us on this number the fees for paper one is 3000 only also students uh, evaluation test course this is how the app looks like first go to your store uh, find ugc net paper one then look for logical reasoning folder inside that there is a evaluation test folder and the evaluation test code for today's classes lr008 okay and um, this is the syllabus for logical reasoning so we'll be covering the whole logical reasoning in this session um and also uh, let's first start with the first topic which is statement versus argument so what is a statement student a statement is a sentence that could either be true or false so the cat is on the mat so this is what this is a kind of a sentence which is a statement it could be either true or it could be false but an argument is a group of statements which in which there are premises and one conclusion of which the argument could be either valid or invalid so this is a very important point that you have to keep in mind that argument cannot be true or false argument can only be valid and invalid so this is the difference and questions will come on the basis of these theory only so listen to them very carefully they take a notebook and a pen and write down the important points that we will be discussing right students so statement could be um, either true or false and argument could be valid or invalid and what is a argument an argument is a group of statements from which there is some of which are premises and exactly there is one conclusion so let's look at this argument all cats are mammals a tiger is a cat so a tiger is a mammal here what is happening these two sentences these two sentences are called premise okay and the final sentence is called the conclusion so what is an argument an argument can have one premise or more than one premise but there will be one and only one conclusion you can have one premise you can have two premise or three premise but the conclusion be one and only one you cannot have two conclusions so an argument is a group of statement from which some are premises and one you have conclusion so an argument could be either valid or invalid remember students argument could be valid or invalid but it get, it cannot be true or false so you cannot call an argument true argument or false argument this is wrong you cannot call it like that argument can only be a valid argument or it could be a invalid argument okay now let's see the structure of an argument so argument is the premise what are premises students premises are the reasons why you are saying the conclusion is true okay what are premise premise is the reason because of which you are concluding or you are saying that the conclusion is true so what is conclusion conclusion is the point that the author is trying to prove okay got it everyone so what is an argument structure and argument structure has premises which are the reasons why the conclusion is true and conclusion is the point that the author is trying to prove right so anyone who is feeling that uh, the screen is not visible properly can change the quality of the video to 480 pixels okay then it will be fine now coming to premises what is premise of an argument a premise of an argument is something that you put forward as a truth 
okay what do you do with the premise you put it forward as a truth but it is not yet proven so this statement is important a premise is not yet proven but you assume it to be true although it is not proven it is assumed to be true although how universally accepted this truth may be is another matter so this is something that you have to remember a premise is an argument which you put forward thinking it as true means you have to uh, you put it forward assuming it to be true but it is not yet proven so some example of premise uh, are as below like it is a hot in here it is a beautiful car the people of this town are angry so what are these students these these are example of premise what are these these are premise so premise of an argument is something that you put forward as truth okay but it may not be proven yet okay now we have three types of reasoning in logical reasoning there are three types which is important but so to say in example point of view only these two are most important inductive deductive and abductive okay abductive is not very important but still we will look at it in this lecture but you need to focus on inductive and deductive very important so students if you hear any time of the word inductive just remember these three letters ipg okay when you hear the word inductive just remember ipg what what is inductive uh, inductive means particular to general okay and you when you hear of the word deductive you have to remember these three terms bgp okay why because in inductive we go from particular to general okay we go from particular particular means specific okay in inductive we go from particular to general and in deductive we go from general to particular okay and in abductive it is an incomplete or observation which leads us to the best prediction okay now what is the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning so deductive reasoning is the process of reasoning that starts from general statement to reach a logical conclusion as i told you dgp from general we go to particular okay as the second sentence or as a second uh, row is selling involves moving from general to particular or specific so it is a top down approach why we are saying top down because from a general we are coming to a particular point so what is this it is general to particular it is called top down from top you are going going downwards so it is top down approach okay this this is called top down approach the conclusion has to be true if premises are true okay so if the premise is true the conclusion is going to be true only now what is inductive so inductive reasoning is the process of reasoning that moves from specific to general okay as i told you ipg what is ipg from particular to general so it involves moving from specific to general okay it involves moving from specific to general it is a bottom up approach now the truth of the premises does not does not necessarily guarantee the truth of the conclusion so i will be telling you about this in the upcoming slides as well okay now what is deductive argument a deductive argument starts from general statements to a specific logical conclusion in other words the premises are true the conclusion necessarily necessarily from those premises follows from those premises so it is called from general to particular top down approach for example if you see all men are mortal socrates is a man therefore socrates is mortal so you know we know that uh, every person who is born on this earth is going to die that is why i'm saying all men are mortal means all men are going to die so this is the circle all men are mortal okay so this is the circle for mortal this is the circle of man now i am saying socrates is a man socrates is a man therefore socrates is mortal so what is happening over here we are going from a general statement 
to a particular statement means first i am saying this general statement that all men are mortal but afterwards i am saying socrates is a man therefore socrates is mortal so this is deductive reasoning students for deductive reasoning we use venn diagram so this is how a venn diagram looks like okay venn diagram now going forward something is very important related to deductive argument is validity what is validity students so validity is the strength of an argument an argument is said to be valid when it follows these three conditions so if the premises are true the conclusion is going to be true okay what i am saying is if the premises are true the conclusion is going to be true i am again i am the second step of validity is if the premises are true the conclusion can't be false okay and if the premises is false the conclusion can be true so if false premises are false conclusion can be true must be true if premises are true okay again i will tell premises if premises are true conclusion must be true if premises are true conclusion can't be false and if premises is false the conclusion can be true but if premises are true the conclusion cannot be false okay and if the conclusion is false the argument is called going to be is called invalid argument so here i have taken the example of both a valid argument and an invalid argument so you will understand both of them very nicely with the help of this this example like if i am saying all dogs are snakes so how do you draw the venn diagram whenever you see the word all with a word that circle is going to be small in this statement all dogs are snake so this dog circle will be smaller circle and snake circle is going to be bigger circle so this is dog circle this is snake circle now i am saying all snakes are birds so this snake circle is going to be small bird circle is going to be big okay so i am saying all dogs are snakes all snakes are birds what is the conclusion the conclusion is all dogs are birds so can you can you deduce or can you say that all dogs are birds yes we can say that because this dog circle is coming inside the bird circle so all dogs are birds so this is a valid argument okay what is this this is a valid argument because when you draw it in a venn diagram it is coming true so this is a valid argument now if you look at invalid argument let me draw this example in a venn diagram i am saying all dogs are mammals so first i will draw a big circle of mammals now i am saying all dogs are mammals all coolies are mammals so i am saying all coolies are mammals okay now all coolies are dogs so can you say all coolies are dogs no you cannot say so what is this this is an invalid argument because when i am drawing a venn diagram on this argument so this is not coming as valid it is coming as invalid so valid argument is the one when you draw it in the help with the help of a venn diagram it comes properly or the conclusion it comes true okay so if i assume okay all the dogs are snakes yes this is true all snakes are bird is true the conclusion is also coming to be as true only okay so this is a valid argument okay now what is soundness so soundness of an argument if you want to call some argument as sound or unsound so it should follow two conditions so what is the two condition it should be valid and its premises are true and our argument is unsound if it is invalid or it has one or more false premises okay so soundness deductive argument is divided into sound and sound and valid and invalid okay let me give you an example of a sound argument so here what is this example all whales are mammals killer whale is a whale therefore killer whale is a mammal let me draw this with the help of a venn diagram okay uh, all whales are mammals okay fine all whales are mammals whale circle is small mammal circle is big now i am saying killer whale is a whale so killer whale is a whale therefore killer whale is a mammal so do you think it is a valid or invalid argument yes certainly because this conclusion is coming right in the argument killer whale is also a kind of a ma mammal 
So this is a valid argument. Okay. What are the two conditions of an argument to be called sound? It should be valid and it should have true premises. Okay. True premises. So in this argument, all whales are mammal is also a true premise. Killer whale is a whale is also a true premise. So it is valid also and the premises are true also. So you can like Shreya is asking how can we say that Venn diagram is right or not. Like if you see in this example, all dogs are mammals, all coolies are mammals. So we are saying all dogs are mammals. We are also saying all coolies are mammals. The conclusion is all coolies are dogs. So can you see this with the help of Venn diagram? So is if you look at this conclusion in this diagram, do you think the conclusion is true or false? All coolies are dogs. No. If coolie circle is inside this circle, then I can say, okay, this is all coolies are dogs. But no, it is not the case. All coolies are not dogs. That is why I am saying this is an invalid diagram argument because when I am drawing it in the Venn diagram it is coming incorrect. Okay this is how we understand valid invalid. Now let's see the example of a sound argument. I am saying all men are married. Okay all men are all men are this is a married circle. Now some doctors are not married. Some doctors are not married. Okay some doctors some doctors are not married so this circle is some doctors are not married now i'm saying some doctors are not men so see with the help of a venn diagram you can easily say that some doctors are not men this is also true see if you talk about validity this argument is a valid argument okay this ar argument is a valid argument but the premise is false okay the premise is false why because all men are married, this is not a true argument. It is a false argument. Why? Because there are many men who are unmarried as well. So I cannot say. For example, a, a student who has just started his internship in college, a boy. So he is not married. Right? Not all men are married in the world. So all men are married. This is a false premise. So if it is a false premise, then it will be an unsound argument. It will be an unsound argument. Okay, got it. All men are married. Some doctors are not married is true. This is a true statement. And some doctors are not men. This is also a true statement. Because some doctors are women as well. Okay, some doctors are women as well. So all men are married is a false premise. That is why this is an unsound argument. Okay. So sound versus unsound, you know, sound is valid and has true premises. As an unsound argument is invalid or it has one false premises. Okay. It could be invalid plus false premise. It could be only invalid. Then also it is uh, unsound argument or even if it has in uh, only false premise, then also it is unsound argument. So, premise is always true in sound argument. At least one is false in unsound argument. Validity is always valid. May be valid or invalid. Okay, like I told you. It could be valid as well as false premise. It could be invalid as well as false premise. So, there the, the diagram for deductive argument is deductive. Could be valid or invalid. I told you how to check validity. Then valid also, there are two types. It could be sound or unsound. Okay, so what is unsound? Unsound means it could be invalid or it is having false premises. Okay, now we have inductive argument also very important for, for exam point of view. Inductive argument is of following times. It could be strong or weak. It could be cogent or uncogent. It is similar to deductive argument. Just we are using different words in inductive argument. It could be strong or weak. Strong is divided into cogent and uncogent. So if the argument is strong, it is it could be either cogent or uncogent. But if it is weak, it is certainly uncogent. Okay. So first, first let's see what is an inductive argument. So an inductive argument is those uh, which starts from pattern among the premises and conclusion that is observed with 
will hold in general according to the argument. So means we are seeing some patterns and then we are coming to a general statement. So it is called particular to general. I told you whenever you hear of the word inductive, remember these three letters IPG. What is IPG? IPG is particular to general. Okay, it is bottom up approach. You will understand it with the help of this di uh, this example. Okay. Chair in the living room is red. Chair in the bedroom is red. Chair in the dining room is red. Therefore, all chairs in the house is red. So, deductive argument could be either it could be true or false. Okay. Uh, sorry. It, inductive argument does not guarantee you the conclusion. Okay. It helps you with probability, not certainty. Okay. For example, why I am saying this, all chair in the house is red. So, do you think that if living room chair is red, bedroom chair is red, dining room chair is red. So, do you think chair in all the house is going to be red? No. Probability is there. Yes, certainly there, there are chances that all chairs in the house can be red. But there are chances that, that they can be some other color as well. So, inductive argument does not guarantee certainty. Okay. Inductive argument is of two types, strong argument, weak argument. So, how do you understand which is a strong argument? Strong argument is if premises are true, 50% or better likelihood. Okay. In conclusion, follows if premises are 50% or better likelihood. When example, I have given uh, or taken a question in yesterday's class that from a basket of 100 apples, 100 apples were there in the basket. You picked 80 apples and 80 apples were ripe. So, you are saying that all apples are, all apples are ripe. Okay. On the other hand, if there are 100 apples in a basket, you picked 3 apples. Now, you are saying all apples are ripe. So, what is this? This is a strong argument because the there are 50% chances means out of 100. What is 50% of 150? So, you selected more than 50 apples. So, you selected how much? You selected 80 apples. And in weak argument, so what is 50% of 100? 50% of 100 is 50. So, you have selected less than 50 apples. So, this is a weak argument. Okay. Very important student. If the In which conclusion follows is premises are 50% or better likelihood. So, if you look at probability, selection of anything could be 0 probability or 1. It could not be more than 1. Half of it is 0 0.5. So, if it is lying between 0 0.5 and 1, it is a strong argument. And if it is lying between 0 and 0 0.5, it is a weak argument. Okay. Strong argument is divided into two. It could be cogent, it could be uncogent. So, it is similarly like like your deductive argument only, it is strong and has no false premise and weak argument is uncogent, is strong and has at least one false premise. Okay. So, you can say strong inductive argument. Again, I am telling it is of two types, strong and weak. Inductive is called IPG from particular to general. Strong means it, it can be cogent or it could be uncogent. If it is cogent, it will have no false premise. And if it is uncogent, it, it is it could be strong and has at least one false premise. Okay. Then what is strong argument? Most peacock eat oatmeal for breakfast. This bird is a peacock. Therefore, this bird eats oatmeal for breakfast. So I am saying. If I draw, draw the circle of peacock, so this is a circle of peacock. Now I am saying from this, how many, most of them, okay, most of them eats oatmeal. Don't confuse with oatmeal. Oatmeal is, just imagine something as khichdi. In India, we, we eat khichdi. Okay, just imagine. This is a hypothetical example, student, okay. So if I am saying most peacocks eat khichdi for breakfast, right? So, oatmeal. I am saying most peacocks eat oatmeal for breakfast. This bird is a peacock. Therefore, this bird eats 
oatmeal for breakfast. So if I'm saying this bird is a peacock, the chances of this bird coming in the circle is very high. Okay, what are the chances? The chances are high of this bird coming in oatmeal circle. So this is a strong argument. While if I am saying most bird, most peacock eat oatmeal for breakfast. Okay, this is a peacock circle. These are the peacocks which eat oatmeal. Okay, now I am saying this bird is a peacock. Therefore, this bird does not eat oatmeal does not eat oatmeal for breakfast is the conclusion. So the chances of this bird coming here is more rather than coming here. Okay, so this is what? This is the circle of peacock. Again, I will tell this is circle for peacock. This is the circle for peacocks eating oatmeal. Now I am saying this bird is a peacock. Therefore, this bird does not eat oatmeal for breakfast is a weak argument because there is less than 50% of chances of the bird coming in this circle. Okay, fine. So, this is a weak argument. Now, what is cogency? Cogency means it should be a strong argument and has true premises. So, cogency is an attribute of an indirect argument that denotes truth of the premises and its logical strength. So, a cogent argument is a strong argument and has all true premises. An uncogent argument is a strong but it is it has false premise. Okay. What it has? There is false premises there. Okay. Now coming to abductive argument. So abductive argument is an argument that seeks the best explanation to a particular situation for example if you go to a doctor and you say doctor i am having fever and i am shivering okay i am my body is shivering so the doctor will say that you are having malaria so what is the doctor giving the doctor is giving the best explanation so in abductive argument you observe a set of observation and seeks the simplest or most likely conclusion of the observation so, if it is fever or shivering, the doctor is concluding that the patient is having malaria. So, this is abductive argument. It is called inference of the best explanation. It is the conclusion drawn just as a best guess. It may or may not be true. Okay. Deductive is always true. And uh, inductive may be true. Abductive also may be true. Okay. Now. Deductive reasoning is based on, what is deductive reasoning based on? It is based on DGP. So, it is general to particular. Okay. Proposition support the conclusion of an argument is called premise. Okay. Premise, I told you, it, it is assumed to be true, but not proven. Okay. Remember. And promise is a statement which is assumed to be true. But it is not yet proven. When a conclusion of an argument follows from its premise or conclu conclusively. It is called a deductive argument. So a deductive argument follows, follows from its premises. Right. Now, what is categorical proposition? Very important. A categorical proposition is the proposition which relates two classes of, of objects. What are the two classes of objects, students? Okay. It is subject and predicate. For example, whales are mammals. Here, whales is a subject and mammals is a predicate. Right. Now, what is the component of categorical proposition? It has subject. Subject is the first category or the class. Predicate is the second category or the class. Copula is the grammatical link between the subject and predicate. And quantifier are the words that specify quantity of the subject. For example, this is the statement. All Indians are hardworking. So, all is the quantifier. It is telling you about the quantity. Another quantifier used is no. So, all Indians are hardworking. It is a quantifier. 
Indian is the subject. R is the copula. It is the grammatical link. And hard working is the predicate. Okay. Coming to two very important terms related to categorical proposition is universal and particular. Universal is of two types. It is affirmative or negative. So affirmative categorical proposition is the proposition that starts with all or every. Okay. All or every. Like all students are hard working or every student is hard working. Or if I say no student is obedient, it is a negative proposition. So universal affirmative is the one that starts with all. Universal negative is the one that starts with no. Now we have particular categorical proposition which has some. It is a part of a class. If I say some dogs are cat, so it is a particular proposition. Now coming to universal affirmative. So universal affirmative is Neelam, if screen is not clear, go to settings and change the quality to 720 pixels. I've done it on my mobile. It is working fine. Change it to 720 pixels. Okay. So universal, yeah. Coming to our content or topic, universal affirmative is the one that has all SSP. If the sentence is of type all SSP, it is called universal affirmative like all cats are animals so this is a universal affirmative statement universal neg negative statement is no fish are birds no fish are birds it is a universal negative and we denote it with e universal affirmative is denoted with a universal negative is denoted with e universal particular affirmative is denoted with i particular negative is denoted with o so what you have to do is you have to make a simple z Right, A here, E here, I here, and O here. A E I O. Just like the five vowels of in English, A E I O U. So we will use only four starting four vowels, A E I O. So A is universal affirmative, E is universal negative, I is un particular affirmative, and O is particular negative. Okay, I have all told you of four types of categorical proposition, A E I O already. Now, you, one thing you have to know about quality and uh, quantity and quality. So, all SSP, it is a universal. I told you in the previous slide, if it is starting with all or no, it is a universal statement. So, all is a universal statement. The quantity is universal. For no SSP, the quantity is universal. Some SSP, quantity is particular. Some S is not P, the quantity is particular. Quality is affirmative. Affirmative means positive. All SSP is a positive statement. So it is affirmative. No SSP is in a, it is a negative statement. Some SSP is again positive statement and no SSP is a negative statement. So if you see the word no or not, you have to, you will conclude that it is a negative statement. Right? Now so we have something called distribution of subject and predicate. Very important for an exam point of view. Many times question has been asked from this. Okay. So you need to know if some categorical proposition has, when it has uh, distributed subject or distributed predicate. So this is a, a kind of categorical proposition. All S is P means all is the quantifier. S is the subject. R is a copula and four-legged animals is a predicate. All horses are four-legged animals. So this is a A categorical proposition. So here what is happening is we are saying all horses are A-legged, four-legged animals. So the word all is applying to each and every horses in the world. That is why the subject is distributed. Means this sentence is getting distributed to each and every horse. Horse in the world. So, subject term is distributed, but the predicate, the predicate here is undistributed. Why I am saying it is undistributed? Because four legged animals could be, it could be horse also, yak also, tiger also, leopard also, cheetah also, lion also, it could be monkey also. So, all of them, all of them are, are there, means not only horse is there, there are many four legged animals other four-legged animals also. So, subject is distributed, but the predicate term remains undistributed. While if I talk about no dogs are cat. So, no dogs are cat. Here, dogs is the subject. 
and cats is the predicate no is the quantifier r is the popular so here no dogs are cats if you look at the circle of dogs this is the circle of dogs and this is the circle of cats but i am saying no dogs are cat means there is exactly no relationship i cannot call not a single dog in the world i can call it cat or not a single cat cat i can call him or a dog so that subject here is distributed and the predicate is also distributed both of them are distributed while if i look at some men are wealthy so some men are wealthy is a i categorical proposition okay here some men so since i am saying some men are wealthy obviously i am not talking about all the men in the world so here some men or i should write men is undistributed and wealthy i am saying some men are wealthy so that means some men if we use look at the wealthy circle i am saying some men are wealthy and some men are not wealthy also so wealthy is also undistributed okay fine now some men are not happy so o categorical proposition men and happy so men here is undistributed because you know i am saying some men are not happy this means that there are some men who are happy as well so men here is undistributed and your not happy means happy is going to be distributed okay happy is going to be distributed right this is a categorical proposition or square of opposition what we call this this is square of opposition what is this universal affirmative universal negative particular affirmative and particular negative students i highly request you please this is a very humble request for for from my side that please please remember this if i talk about contrary contrary is the relationship between a and e and contradictory is this relationship between a and o okay contrary is the relationship between a and e and contrary contradictory is the relationship between a and o and i and e sub contrary is the relationship between i and o and sub alternate is the relationship between i a and i and and e and o okay got it everyone yeah so what is the um, rule of contrary the rule of contrary is that both cannot be true but both can be false okay both cannot be true but both can be false but the opposite of contrary is sub contrary which is both cannot be false but both can be true so if you remember contrary also you will remember sub contrary as well and contradictory is opposite truth values if a is true o is false if a is false o is true the same way is e is true i is false and if i is for e is false i is going to be true sub alternate implies super and alternate implies sub alternate okay so sub alternate is the relationship between a and i and e and o so this is uh, i will help tell you with the help of a venn diagram with the help of questions given below our proposition all men like cricket which kind of categorical proposition is this so if i talk about students if i talk about all men like cricket so this is an example of which kind of categorical proposition students this is an example of universal affirmative why universal because all word is used and affirmative means it is a positive statement okay now proposition that supports the conclusion of an argument is called a premise i told you in one of the previous question also proposition that supports the conclusion of an argument is called premise it is assumed to be true but it is not yet proven okay next the proposition or uh, some indians are not spiritual is an example of which kind of statement universal affirmative universal negative particular affirmative or particular negative so the proposition some indians are not spiritual okay what i am saying is some indians are not spiritual is an example of particular negative okay why particular 
because some word is used whenever you see the word some it means particular and not means it is a negative proposition okay all indians eat rice and some indians eat rice is an example of which kind of relationship so let me draw the square of opposition a e i o all indians eat rice and some indians eat rice so this is an example of subalteration a is the right answer subalteration is the right answer to this question okay if two proposition cannot be false but they may be true oh okay they cannot be false but they could be true what is the relationship between the two proposition so this is definitely sub contrary remember students if i am talking about contrary both could be false okay but in sub contrary both could be true so the question is saying two proposition cannot be false okay cannot be false but may be true so may be true is sub contrary simple okay so b is the answer affirmative or negative is the classification of proposition on the basis of quantity quality validity or truth so certainly this is on the basis of quality okay quantity is if the statements all and no so all and no these words tell us about the quantity but quality tells us means positive and negative affirmative or negative tells us about the quality of the proposition now as i told you proposition expresses unconditional judgment okay what is categorical proposition there is unconditional judgment like all rabbits are long ears all cows are mammals and hypothetical preposition is a where it has a conditional judgment is there like if he studied then he received a good grade or if we had not eaten then we would be hungry so here what is happening is categorical proposition has unconditional judgment and hypothetical has conditional judgment coming to so here i am going to tell you about moods and figures okay so we use categorical proposition in moods and figures there are three elements of categor categorical proposition uh, or should i say four okay what is the element subject predicate copula and the quantifier okay i have already told you now comes this very very important term student what is major term minor term and middle term so if this is an example of an argument some bread are milk some milk are butter some butter are bread so middle term is the term which is the which is common in the two premises so milk and milk is common so it is the middle term minor term what is the minor term minor term is the subject of the conclusion and major term is the predicate of the conclusion okay what is minor term minor term is the subject of conclusion and major term it is the predicate of the conclusion fine got it remember middle term is absent in the conclusion but it is present in both the premises but major term it is the predicate of the conclusion and minor term it is the subject of the conclusion for example butter butter is the subject so it is the minor term of the conclusion bread is the predicate of the conclusion it is the major term milk is the middle term in this argument now coming to your uh, yeah arguments each term is used twice like milk milk is here also here also bread is there in your first premise and the conclusion butter is also in the second statement and the subject of the conclusion so there are two milk two breads and two butters now what is mood mood of a categorical proposition is the standard form is a string of three letters which tells us whether it is a major premise or minor premise or conclusion of an argument for example no mammals are birds you know what is no mammals are bird so no mammals are bird it is a kind of which categorical proposition it is e all animals are uh, all mammals are animals is a and therefore no animals are birds so it is a e so what is the mood of this figure the mood is a e a 
वो सॉरी ई ए तो मूड इज ई ए नाउ वॉट इज द फिगर फिगर ऑफ द कैटेगोरिकल प्रोपोजिशन सो फिगर टेल्स अस वेर इज द मिडिल टर्म इन द दिलोजिज्म ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ मिडिल टर्म इज हियर एंड हियर सो दिस इज मिडिल टर्म एंड प्रेडिकेट सब्जेक्ट एंड एंड मिडिल टर्म सब्जेक्ट एंड प्रेडिकेट यू नो इन द कंक्लूजन मिडिल टर्म इज नॉट देयर okay so as you all know in the conclusion you will not find the middle term conclusion has only subject and predicate okay everywhere only subject and predicate is there Con in conclusion middle term is not there but if you want to find the figure you need to see where is the middle term so if the middle term is like this so this is the first figure means here middle term is here in the starting and middle term is in the in the second statement it is in the end so this is a first figure second figure is if it is on the right hand side third figure if middle term is both in both the sentences it is if it is in the left hand side and in the fourth figure if it is diagonally to the right so this is a fourth figure so this is how the figure of a categorical proposition looks like so if you look at valid syllogistic forms so here we have 15 syllogistic forms which are valid syllogistic forms there are unconditionally valid also students this is not very important but you can take a screenshot and look at it okay so these are some of the uh, unconditionally valid syllogistic forms and these are conditionally valid syllogistic forms so conditionally valid see unconditionally valid you have how many are there you have 15 okay and conditionally valid you have 9 so total you have 25 right now now coming back to fallacy what is a fallacy students so a fallacy is nothing it is error in reasoning whenever you find error in reasoning it is called yeah error in involves reasoning uh, error which comes in the argument while reasoning it is called a fallacy so fallacy are the type of argument or expression which lead to a invalid form or error in reasoning so what are fallacies these are mistaken beliefs of an unsound argument fallacies are of two types formal and informal remember this is very very important students formal fallacy is the fallacy which has problem with structure or form and informal fallacy has the problem where the problem is with the content of an argument okay the problem is with the content of the argument fine now formal fallacies so what are formal fallacies these are error in the form arrangement or technical structure of an argument so what is the problem the problem is there with the form structure or technical technical structure okay so it is deductive argument that is invalid so this validity if we talk about valid and valid you will see only in deductive argument like if i say all vehicles all cars are vehicles all buses are vehicles therefore all cars are buses let me draw this i am saying this is vehicle circle i am saying all cars are buses all buses are first i am saying all cars are vehicles so all cars are vehicle all buses are vehicles now i am saying all cars are buses so do you think it is a valid or invalid argument certainly it is a kind of invalid argument okay what is this this is a kind of a invalid argument now some men are mortal socrates is a man therefore socrates is mortal so this is true but it is a invalid argument because if i am saying this is a circle of mortal i am saying some men are mortal okay now i am saying socrates is a man therefore socrates is mortal so if this is the circle of mortal this is a circle of men socrates could be here also and socrates could be here also so if i am saying socrates is mortal this is a invalid argument because we are not sure that if socrates is going to come in this place or this place so this becomes an invalid argument why look at if you look at this statement some men are green socrates is a man therefore socrates is green 
So this is a false and in a valid argument because we have never seen any men on this earth who are green in color. So this is a false argument, but it is invalid because if we draw the Venn diagram also, this will not come correctly. Okay, what will happen? This will not come correctly, students. Some men are like this is a circle for green. This is the circle for men. I am saying some men are green. Socrates is a man. Socrates is green. Again, Socrates can come in this circle also. He could come in this circle also. So I cannot be sure if Socrates is green. So this is invalid also and it is false also. Fine, because I cannot conclude means with the help of Venn diagram, I cannot say that Socrates is green because he can be here also. He can be here also. Since there is no surety, it is a it is an invalid argument. Now, what is informal fallacy? So, informal fallacy is a matter of unclear expression. An argument may have a valid logical form yet be unsound because the premises are false. So, you remember what we studied? We studied that deductive reasoning or deductive argument. It could be valid, invalid. Okay, we studied it if it could be valid and invalid. And valid, if, if it is valid, it could be sound or unsound. And if it is invalid, it is certainly unsound. So now I am going to tell you about the fallacies that are there in um, your western logic. So informal fallacies, use of language such as words of, or grammar, misstatement of facts, misconception due to underlying presumptions or illogical sequence of thoughts. So these are going to be very interesting informal fallacies. We are going to see each one of them in detail in further slides right now let's see very important fallacies directly so many questions come from this part of the logical reasoning unit okay fallacy of equivocation so what is fallacy of equivocation it means the words or expression in multiple sense are present in an argument which leads to wrong conclusion for example if i say logic teaches you to argue Okay, what is here? The meaning of argue means to put your point. If you are putting your point, it means argument. Okay, this is my argument on this subject. So, logic teaches us how to argue. People argue entirely too much. So, here the meaning of argue is fine. Here the meaning of argue means to put a point. Okay. First, in the first statement, we are saying logic teaches you how to argue. People argue entirely too much. Therefore, we don't need to teach people logic. So, this is a fallacy con committed and the name of the fallacy is fallacy of equivocation. What is this? This is a fallacy of equivocation. So, here one word is used but there is multiple meaning of the word. Okay, so this is a fallacy. Then another type of fallacy is fallacy of amphibology or semantic or syntactic ambiguity. So here what is happening is it is a variation on the above is when a word phrase or grammatical construction is used which can be understood in more than one way. For example, Laurie calls her mother when she is alone. So here this particular statement that Laurie, Laurie is a girl who calls her mother when she is alone. So here she could be Laurie also or she could be Laurie's mother also. Okay. So here it could be Laurie calls her mother when her mother is alone or Laurie calls her mother when she herself is alone. So what is this? This is a fallacy. What is the fallacy? Fallacy of amphibology, sem semantic or syntactic ambiguity. What is ambiguity? There is confusion. Whether we are talking about Laurie or her mother. So this is a kind of a fallacy, fallacy of amphibology. Another type of fallacy is fallacy of composition. So this fallacy involves taking attributes of a part of an object and then applying them to entire object or class. So what you are doing from a object, we are taking a part and then you are applying the same thing to the complete object. For example, if I say, if I stand, I can see better. What is the premise? If I stand, I can see better. Conclusion is, if we all stand, we can see better. So what is this? This is a fallacy. What is the fallacy? The fallacy of composition. If something is applied to the part, we are applying the same thing to the whole object. 
So what is the fallacy? Fallacy of composition. Another type of fallacy is fallacy of division. What is the fallacy? Assuming that what is present for the whole must be present for each constituent part. If I am saying most popular sport in England is soccer. Right? What is soccer? Soccer means football. I am saying the most popular sport in England is soccer. Tom is English. Therefore, Tom's favorite sport is soccer. So here, like the same thing applies to India. That all uh, in the most popular sport in India is cricket. So Rahul is an Indian. So his favorite sport is cricket. So this is wrong. Why? Because if everyone is having means if mostly people are liking soccer or cricket does not mean every person is going to have his favorite game as soccer or cricket. So what is this? This is a fallacy. What is the fallacy? The fallacy is fallacy of division. Now another thing is if water is liquid then both hydrogen and oxygen must be liquid. So this is definitely a very funny policy fallacy because why? Water, hydrogen and oxygen these are atoms. So, how does hydrogen or air, how does water look like? How the chemical formula of water looks like this. Two oxygen and one hydrogen. So, I am saying water is liquid. Then both hydrogen and oxygen must be liquid. No, these are not liquid. These are atoms. So, this is fallacy of division. Means assuming that what is true for the whole must be true for its constituent part. Means if something is applied to H2 word does not mean it is applying to hydrogen and oxygen in individually. So this is fallacy of division. Now another type of fallacy is fallacy of ascent. So we have seen this type of fallacy so many times in our, um, in our lives. For example, ascent is the stress placed upon a word in a sentence or a syllable. It is called fallacy of emphasis. Now, this is the same sentence, but the way you are saying it will lead to a fallacy. I didn't take the test yesterday. So, I am saying I did not take the test. Somebody else took the test. Then I am saying I didn't take the test yesterday. So, it means I did not take it. The third sentence is I didn't take the test yesterday. So, it could be something else that I did something else with it. Okay. Then the statement is, I didn't take the test yesterday. It means I did not take the particular test yesterday. I took it on some other day. Uh, I, sorry, it means that I took a different test yesterday. The third, uh, the fifth is, I didn't take the test yesterday. I took something else. The sixth statement is, I didn't take the test yesterday. It means I did not take it yesterday. I took it some on some other, other day. So, what is this? This is a fallacy of ascent. It means ascent is the stress placed upon a word in a sentence or a word. So, this is also called fallacy of emphasis. What is this called? This is called fallacy of emphasis. The way we are putting emphasis on different words will tell us that the meaning of the sentence. Okay. Student, this is fallacy of uh, red herring. Okay. Red herring fallacy. So, red herring fallacy is a logical fallacy where what happens is irrelevant information is presented alongside relevant information distracting attention from the relevant information. The example means, this is a very nice example of red herring fallacy. Mike, Mike is saying, Mike and Ken, two people are talking. Mike is saying it is morally wrong to cheat on your spouse. Why would on earth would you, would you have done it? Then Ken is saying, what is morality exactly? So Mike is saying it is a code of conduct shared by cultures. Then Ken is saying, who is, who creates this code? What Ken is doing over here, Ken is distracting the attention from the important point that is being discussed. So, this is red herring fallacy, okay, where irrelevant information is presented alongside relevant information. Now, you have fallacy of ignore, ignoratio elenchi. So, what is this? It means that this is fallacy of irrelevant conclusion. What you are doing is 
though claims and conclusion may be logical valid but they do not address the point in the question for example if i say great school children these days can neither read or not write so many times we have seen that students who go to good school are not able to read or write so this is a true statement but clearly there should be returned in the classroom so what we are doing is logically these conclusion may be valid but they are not addressing the point so what was the point in this example the point is that the students should read and write so bringing prayer will not help the children to read and write so here this is a fallacy means claim and conclusion may be logically valid but they don't address the point in the question okay now we have fallacy of accident so this fallacy is also very nice student what is fallacy of accident when an attempt is made to apply a general rule to all situations when clearly they are there are exceptions to the rule like if i'm saying birds can fly so what is if i say that okay birds can uh, fly applies to all the birds therefore arguing and even believing that penguins can fly so what is this this is a fallacy of accident okay yesterday i took a question where uh, the, it was a question of 2021 the question was anyone who puts a knife into another person should be arrested okay so then it said um, surgeons put knife into another person therefore surgeon should be arrested which fallacy is happening so the fallacy that is happening in that case is fallacy of accident when something that is applied to a general rule but there are exceptions okay so generally if anybody is putting a knife into another person's stomach should be arrested so what is this this is morally wrong you cannot do that you cannot hurt any person but surgeons surgeons put a knife why they put a knife because they are treating patients so surgeons are an exception so this is fallacy of accident when there is a general rule and there are exceptions to the rule okay now we have straw man fallacy so this is a fallacy when someone takes another person's argument and he exaggerates it to some extreme way okay one person is saying only pollution from human contributes to climate change then other person got gets angry and he is saying so you think humans are responsible from extreme weather like hurricanes and have caused drought in southern us so what is this if that's the case maybe we should go to the south west and perform a rain dance so what is this this is a fallacy where one person takes another person's statements and exaggerates it okay now we have another type of fallacy ad hominem fallacy so what happens is in this fallacy you, there it is based on feeling of prejudice what is happening there is feeling of prejudices there often irrelevant to the argument rather than facts reason or logic and ad hominem argument is often a personal attack to someone's character or motive rather than the point that he is talking about so if a person is talking about a person who has uh, done he has done a robbery okay maybe he has done a robbery now now this person is saying we should be very nice we should help others and we should not take steal things so this person who has once upon a time done robbery if he is making a statement then we are we are questioning him what we are doing is we are attacking him by saying okay who are you to talk about uh, stealing or robbery why because you were you were also once in jail in the case of robbery so this is also kind of a fallacy now appeal to pity so appeal to pity is a fallacy where what you are doing is you are trying to win a conversation by pointing out unfortunate consequences okay for example and if a person has been given a ticket means you say chalan in india in foreign countries we call it a ticket so i one person got a ticket because he was not driving properly he he was uh, driving the over the speed limit or he was drinking and driving so this person who was given the ticket he is saying i am a single parent responsible for the financial support of my children if you give me ticket i will lose my license and will not be able to work 
If I cannot work, my children and I will become homeless and starve to death. So what is this? This is appeal to pity. You are trying to win the argument by pointing out the unfortunate situations in your life. Okay, this is appeal to pity. Another type of fallacy is fallacy of ignorance or it is called argument of ignoration. So in this type of fallacy, this is also an important, it is appeal to ignorance proposes that we accept the truth of a proposition unless an opponent can prove an otherwise. Okay, so if we are saying you cannot prove that God does not exist, therefore God exists. Okay, because no one in the world, in the whole world is not able to prove that God does not exist. Therefore, we are believing that he is, he exists. So, this is appeal to ignorance. So, near, mostly appeal to ignorance fallacy is related to this kind of example only. In the exam, they will give you a situation and they will ask you which fallacy is committed in this statement. Right now, coming to appeal to force. So, appeal to force is a fallacy when somebody who is having a very uh, high position or power in the society, he is using uh, his power to prove his point. Okay, so if you do not agree with my political opinions, you will receive a great F for this course. So what a teacher is doing, a teacher is using his power. He is saying that if you don't agree with my political opinions, you will re receive a great F. So this is appeal to force fallacy. Another type of fallacy is appeal to authority. So appeal to authority is also very important. I have seen questions based on this particular fallacy. What happens here is, it is a fallacy where some someone famous or accomplished in another area or expertise is supposed to guarantee the truth of a conclusion. For example, a person is saying, we should abolish the death penalty. Many respected people such as actor Gay Handsome has publicly stated its opposition to it. So what I am doing is, here is, I am using... Appeal to authority, somebody else's statement, somebody who is having, who is very famous or accomplished in another area. His statement I am using to, pro to prove my point. So, I am saying we should abolish death penalty, respected people as actor gay handsome. So, this is an actor. How will be he able to tell about death penalty or anybody who is like a software engineer? Okay. Any person who is a software engineer, if he is telling uh, anything about medical terms, anything related to medical field. So, what is this? This is appeal to authority. Fallacy. Then we have appeal to emotion. So, appeal to emotion is a fallacy. When you arouse, means when you arouse strong feelings by using very strong words. So, this is a, a fallacy. The appeal to emotion relies upon Emotive, emotively charged language to arouse strong feelings that may lead the audience to accept its conclusion. Many times politicians do this. Okay, what they do is they use very strong words to uh, inculcate the feeling of hatred among the among the public. Why? Because what they want to do is they want to win the elections. So this is appeal to emotion. Emotionally, they are charging people. Okay, they are trying to charge people to accept its conclusion okay hasty generalization very good example hasty generalization is a fallacy it is called over generalization fallacy it is basically making a claim based on evidence which is too small so you have a evidence which is too small on the basis of that strong evidence you are giving a very big conclusion for example, some teenagers in our community has vandalized the park downtown. So, vandalized means burned or destroyed, you can say. So, if some teenagers, maybe five or six, if they have done this mischief of uh, um, burning or uh, vandalizing the park, so can you say all teenagers are irresponsible and destructive. No, there are so many teenagers who are having ill parents or they are having younger siblings and they take care of their family very well. So, I cannot say that all teenagers are irresponsible and destructive. So, what is this? This is a type of 
fallacy student okay what is the fallacy the fallacy is hasty generalization fallacy another type of fallacy is slippery slope fallacy so what is happening in slippery slope fallacy you take an initial premises and see it through a change of consequences until you arrive in unacceptable undesirable and disastrous outcome okay what you do is you take a initial premise so what is the initial premise if you don't do your homework you will fail in the class okay what is the premise students if you don't do homework you will fail in the class but now if i see if you fail in the class you won't graduate from school if you don't graduate you won't get into college if you don't attend good college you won't get good job and if you don't get good job you will be poor and homeless so you say so do you want to be poor and homeless do you so many times this kind of statement is being used by parents and guardians what you do is you take a initial premise so this is the initial premise and you see it through a chain of events you go through a chain of events and you come up with a unacceptable and undesirable outcome so this is slippery slope fallacy false dilemma fallacy so false dilemma fallacy is a black and white thinking or either or fallacy so here what you do is you give only two options to another person to pick one out of them if i say vote for me or live through four more years of higher taxes or if i say america love it or leave it so this is false dilemma fallacy or if i say donate to my campaign if you care about your future so you are giving a false dilemma what is the meaning of dilemma dilemma means conclusion confusion okay black and white fallacy or you can say false dilemma fallacy then you have post hoc fallacy okay post hoc fallacy is the fallacy where which means after this therefore because of this so it means if i am saying a um, b comes after a first a is coming then b is coming so i am saying b uh, a is the reason why b is coming okay for example very good example i have given over here this example is very nice if i am saying the rooster crows immediately before sunrise therefore the rooster causes the sunrise sun to rise so this is certainly a fallacy because rooster they shout so loudly before the sunrise right and just after the rooster crows there is sunrise so do you think this rooster is responsible for sunrise no this is the fallacy post hoc fallacy okay next is fault analogy fallacy so this is also very nice fallacy here what you do is this fallacy consists assuming that because two things are alike in one or more respects they are necessarily alike in other respect as well so if i say if a child gets a new toy he or she will want to play with it so if a nation gets new weapon he or she will want to use them so here what is happening is a faulty analogy fallacy is happening over here what is happening students a faulty analogy happening fallacy is happening over here okay now now we have is begging the question fallacy what is begging the question fallacy it is a fallacy of uh, when an argument premises assume the truth of the conclusion instead of supporting it in other words you assume without proof so begging the question is also called arguing in circle what it is called arguing in circle so what you do is happiness is the highest good for a human being since all other values are inferior to it so what you are doing you are saying happiness is the highest good yes we know it is the highest good then you are saying other values are inferior to it so certainly if anything has the highest value other things are going to be inferior to it so saying this is a fallacy okay it is a fallacy next you have what is definition so a definition is made up of two parts definendum and definion so definendum is the term that is that has to be defined and
and definition is the word definition is the word uh, which we use to define the term okay right so definition is made up of two parts definiendum and definition okay now what are the types of definition lexical theoretical stipulative or precising persuasive parenthetical denotative or connotative so here we have these many definitions we have in your syllabus that we will be looking at each one of them okay so what is lexical definition so lexical definition is called dictionary definition or it is called it is used for removing the ambiguity so lexical definition of river is large natural channel of water so what is lexical definition it of river means the dictionary meaning of any word here like river river means large natural channel of water another definition is theoretical definition so theoretical definition is the scientific definition of anything or any concept so here heat what is heat energy associated with the random motion of molecules of substances so this is the theoretical definition or if i say weight is the measurement of gravitational weight acting on an object so what is the student this is a kind of a theoretical definition then you have stipulative definition so stipulative definition is in which new or currently existing words are given meaning okay for example if you say lol or which means lots of laugh or it means laughing out loud so both of them you what you are doing is you are giving a, a new meaning or a a new meaning to a new term or an existing term so this is stipulative definition then you have precising definition so precising definition is used to reduce vagueness vagueness means unclarity if there is no clarity and you want to remove that you are using precising definition for example if says the word poor is vague means it is unclear now if the government is introducing a scheme and it is saying that i am going to give 2000 rupees to poor people so now it will have to define who people which kind of people are called poor so poor people are those people who have their income annual income less than 4000 okay having a uh, and a net worth of okay and a net worth of less than 2000 means total in total they are having only 20000 dollars with them or annually they are earning only less than 4000 then they, they are called poor people so this word poor if you want to remove the vagueness associated with it you will use precising definition another is called persuasive definition so persuasive definition is when you are using um emotions it could be positive or negative to give a meaning to a term it could be positive or negative for example if you say someone against abortion may offer the definition of abortion as murder of a innocent person during pregnancy so what is abortion he is saying the dictionary means the lexical meaning of abortion could be terminating a pregnancy what is it abortion means terminating a pregnancy but somebody who is in the opposition of abortion he will say murder of a innocent person during pregnancy so this is a persuasive definition where you say you are using your emotions next we have parenthetical definitions parenthetical definition is something if you want to explain something you put it inside words for example if i am saying a dog not a cat is an animal that barks so if i am saying not a cat so this is a parenthetical definition or if i am saying my umbrella which is no somewhat broken can still shield two of us from rain so this is the parenthetical definition then we have denotation so what is denotation student it is the dictionary meaning or this the denotation of any term has does not have any emotion okay 
so if i am saying the blueberry is blue so here what i mean is it means that the color of blue blueberry is blue and if i say suzy is blue so what is the meaning of blue over here blue means sad okay so here the color blue it is the meaning blue is called a this is a connotative meaning of the word blue why because i am using emotion sad is also emotion happy sad angry anxious what are these these are different emotions so this is blue here it is the denotative meaning the word blue here which means sad it is a connotative meaning what is connotation so connotation expresses feeling it could be either positive negative or neutral feelings so what is connotative meaning the word like young youthful and childish so young is a neutral word youthful is a positive word and childish is, is is a negative word the same way proud is a neutral word confident is a positive word and conceited is a negative word so these are connotations connotation expresses feelings it could be positive negative or neutral now we have a stipulated stipulative definition may be said to be neither true nor false so stipulative can neither be true nor false a definition put forward to resolve a dispute by influencing at attitudes or stirring emotions is called your persuasive definition so what is this this is a persuasive definition a definition that has a meaning that is deliberate deliberately assigned to some symbol is called stipulative definition okay and dash is a subject meaning of a word so connotative is a subjective meaning of a word what is the meaning of subjective subjective means your personal views or emotions are attached to any word the function of suggesting a quality is possessed by an object is called connotative the example is young youthful and childish so all of them tells us about the qualities so connotative meaning tells us about qualities determining the nature of the following definition abortion which means the ruthless murdering of innocent child so if you want to determine the nature of this definition so this definition is a persuasive definition which uses emotions okay persuasive definition uses emotions got it student now what is indian philosophy schools so there are two schools in indian philosophy one is called orthodox which is vedas believer and they are called uh, astic and heterodox means those who don't believe in veda these are called nastic okay now uh, vedas there are four types of vedas rigved yajurved samved and atharved orthodox school has six schools nyaya samkhya vaishishta yoga purva mimamsa and upar uttar mimamsa heterodox schools are jainism buddhism and charvaka also pramanas what is pramanas pramanas means sources of knowledge from which source you are getting knowledge for example uh, for instance there are certain uh, terms associated with pramanas pramata means the subject or the knower pramana means the source of the knowledge and pramaya means the object the object the knowable okay now there are six type of pramanas anumana upmana arthapati anuplavi shabda and pratyaksha so pratyaksha is whenever you are using your sense organs in your uh, um, in getting knowledge it is called pratyaksha it is called perception in english it is of two types direct perception and remembered perception direct perception is called anubhava remembered perception is called smriti some schools have divided pratyaksha into nirvikalpaka and savikalpaka nirvikalpaka is called discriminate perception it means object is perceived without features okay some uh, we are starting with the hindi classes from monday okay so from monday i'll be teaching in english okay now savikalpaka in which distinguishing features are both observed and recognized so this is savikalpaka Savikalpaka is of two types: lokic and alokic. Lokic means when you are using external uh, sense organs, your sight, smell. Sight is called chakshu, smell is called ghrana, sound is called srota, touch is called tvak, 
and sense of taste is called rasna. So, lokic perception is when you are using your sense organs. A lokic is of three times when it when we have no direct contact with the object. It is of three types: samanya laksana, perception of classes. You have janana lakshana and you have yoga jana. Okay. Samanya lakshana means you see similar characteristics. Janana lakshana means the role of one sense organ is done by another sense organ. And yoga is, in, is the intuition used by yogis. Now anumana. Anumana means knowing after. It is the method of knowledge derived from the derived from knowledge. So, it is of three types, Purvat, Sheshvat and Samanyudrishta. So, Purvat, it means something which is before the event has happened. If you perceive of something, it is called Purvat. After the incident has happened and you come to know of something, that it is called Sheshvat. And Samanyudrishta is something uh, when, when you um, see similar it means like uh, similar characteristics you see in, uh, for example, demonetization. Somebody who has already seen demonetization in, in his life, he knows, okay, if demonetization will come, then there will be a lot of problems. So, this is also inference. Samanya Drishta. Upmana is when you use, use analogy to get knowledge. Shabda Pramana, it is called verbal testimony. It means using Vedas which are the ancient sacred scriptures to gain knowledge. So, this is Shabda Pramana. Anuplabdi is when the absence of something is giving you knowledge. It is called Anuplabdi. And Arthapati, it means with one perception is not able to prove another point. So, we use your own knowledge. Like if I say, Devdat does not eat during the day. Devdat is fat. Okay. So, if I say that Devdat does not eat during the day. I say that Dev, Devdat is eating during the night. So, this is called Arthapati, which is called implication or post, postulation. Now, Anumana, as I told you, Purvavat, Sheshvat and Samanya Drishti. So, here, as per Nyaya uh, Syllogism, there are five members of Syllogism. This hill has fire. So, this is the first step. It is called Pratijina. Because it has smoke, it means Hetu. Whatever has smoke has fire, this is Tudharna. And if I say this hill has smoke, which is invariably associated with fire, it is called Upnaya, which is called application. And Nigamna is called the deduction. So, these are the five members of Nyaya syllogism. Very important. Directly questions come from this particular topic. Now, we have structure of Anumana. So, Anumana is has three types it is made up of the major term minor term and the middle term as i told you you saw in the western syllogism also major term is the predicate of the conclusion minor term is the subject of the conclusion and he too which is called the middle term is in the both the premises so sadhya is the major term and paksha is the minor term vyapti is the relationship between sadhya and paksha okay what is the relationship between sadhya and paksha that is vyapti Okay, next we have is Hetva Bhasa. So, we have different types of fallacies in Indian logic which is called Hetva Bhasa. Here, middle term appears to be a reason but it is not a valid reason. We have Asiddha, Savya Vichara, Satya Pratipaksha, Badita and Viruddha. So, Savya Vichara means it is a irregular middle fallacy when middle term may be irregularly related to the major term. I am saying all men drink x is also drinking therefore x is a man so what is this this is a irregular middle term fallacy because i am saying i am saying all men drink so this is the circle for drill this is the circle of men all men drink x is also drinking x is also drink so x is a man so can you see the fallacy x could be some animal also x could be a man also so what is this this is a fallacy Fallacy Savya Vichara when the middle term, which is the middle term here, drink. The, the middle term is irregularly related to the major term, which is the man. Viruddha. Viruddha means when the middle term validates the contrary of the major term. The air is heavy because it is empty. 
so here the middle term empty empty is what empty is the middle term heavy is the major term and air is the minor term so the middle term is proving the opposite of the major term okay so what is this this is viruddha fallacy then you have sat pratipaksha so sat pratipaksha is when two middle terms are available to prove contradictory major term so in one statement you are saying alcohol is good because it protects you from cold so what is this this is a in this statement we are saying good about alcohol in the second statement i am saying alcohol is bad because it causes liver liver failure so the first the middle term is cold and the other middle term is failure so here i am proving contradictory major terms asiddha asiddha is another type of fallacy here what is happening is here the middle term is yet to be proved because we are not able to establish the existence okay let's see shadow or liquid because it has failed so here what this is asiddha fallacy asiddha hetu is one which is not yet proved but requires to be proved okay asiddha means unproven middle we have not yet proved for example if you look at this ashra siddha ashra siddha is when minor term is false sky lotus is fragrant because it is a lotus just like the lotus of the pond so sky lotus is not available in real life means it is not a real thing so i am saying sky lotus is saying sky lotus is fragrant because it is a lotus it is ashra siddha fallacy then we have as swarup siddha and vyapta siddha so these are three types of uh, fallacies of asiddha okay now we have badita badita is the middle term of an inference may be contradictory by some other stronger means of knowledge means if i am saying fire is cold because it is a substance so even if i am saying this substance all the people in the world they know fire is not cold fire is not cold it is hot because if one uh one inference is getting disapproved by some other strong perception okay the here here the middle term substance becomes contradictory because major term coldness is directly contradicted by perception okay so this is badita so this is the end of the session all the topics of logical reasoning we have seen in nearly 90 minutes so all the best students i hope this session was helpful to you or if you like it uh, do hit like and share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel okay so see you in our next class we are starting our new batch again i'll tell you we are starting with our new batch from tomorrow uh, for ugc net paper 1 do join and clear your upcoming examination take care students all the best bye